I think we all remember that fateful day in math class when you looked up and suddenly there were letters next to the numbers in your equations. I can still hear my teacher's voice as he told us all that these are called variables. I don't know if you remember the purpose of these guys from math class, but at the time my key takeaway was the idea you could change the value in an equation and get something completely different. Now let's put a computer science lens on it. Because to a data dork, the name makes a lot of sense because it can be a variety of values and even different types of data. So it kind of makes sense it would be called a variable. Let's take a look at one of those school equations we love so much. So we have a table with the names of some of the main parts we will need for our computer, the quantity we will need, and the estimated price. If you have ever worked with Excel before, you're probably highly familiar with variables, even though you might not know. Let's take a look at the quantity of cooling fans we are going to need for our gaming computer. We estimate these will cost 50 bucks each, so how would we calculate the estimated cost for all our cooling fans? We could do something like this. Now if you are new to Excel, we start formulas with an equal sign to tell it we will need it to evaluate something. What happens though if we find out the number of cooling fans we will need depends on the motherboard and graphics card we get. We find out we need three now. Our cooling fan total didn't update, so we really need to incorporate this cell into our calculation. How do we do that? We are now referencing the cell named C6 so that if we use it anywhere in this spreadsheet, it will point to the value in the cell. C6, and in essence, every cell in a spreadsheet is a variable. Each cell can be a variety of different values and types of values, from my name to a number to a formula, or even a collection of numbers. We are going to think of variables like the cells in an Excel spreadsheet. However, instead of referencing a location in a spreadsheet, variables point to a location on your computer that saves this value so you can refer to it later. As data dorks, we will be utilizing variables a lot in both Excel and Python because of their composability and reusability. Let's think about the formula we will need in order to calculate the total for our gaming PC. We would need to first multiply the cost of the computer part times the quantity we will need and then add each of these together. Something like this. This is how our math teacher would probably write out this equation. There is of course an X and several other characters that really don't tell us much about the different inputs. However, I think most people could tell you that this reads as someone multiplying four different values and adding them together. This is highly reusable since it will calculate a total for any combination on this planet of four different items. However, it doesn't really provide much context around the types of inputs if someone else came along and looked at this formula. So we could refine this formula a bit. I would say this is the way a data dork would write the same equation. In all reality, we just added more characters, so it is for sure a longer form to write this, but more descriptive relative to the inputs if someone else came along and wanted to utilize this formula to estimate the cost to build their gaming computer. So where this formula falls short in generalizing to other areas outside of, say, a gaming computer, it makes up for in composability by adding context to the variables. Regardless of the formula though, ultimately, it results down to the same thing, which is estimated dollars our PC will cost. You might not know this, but you're actually able to name cells and even ranges of cells instead of relying on the traditional column followed by row number syntax that is natural to Excel. As we discussed, naming variables descriptively makes it easier for someone else to come along and better understand what you were trying to do. In Excel, you can name a cell or cell range in one of two ways. Either you can go to the define name button on the Excel ribbon under the formulas tab, or you can do what I do and just type over the cell name in the front of the formulas bar. So we can now reference the cell either still with C6 or with our new fans quantity name. Both work the same way under the hood. Now let's jump over to Python and see how you define a variable there. Since Python doesn't have a graphical interface like Excel, the naming of your variables is much more critical. Let's write our first Python variable. 
As you can see in this example, on the left side we define the name of the variable, in this case graphics card quantity. Then we set that equal to a desired value. Now if we call the graphics card quantity like this, we get one, which is what we initially set it to. That is how easy it is to create a variable and give it an initial value in Python. In this episode of DataDorse, we learned all about variables and how we can use them to add context to our inputs. At the same time, reduce the number of changes needed if we want to update a value throughout one of our programs. In our next episode of DataDorks, we will be diving into what computers and applications were born to do. Math.